Alrighty, hello again folks. Uh, this is a long-awaited A2B video, and it is the longest uh, video so far, but it should be interesting to those who are interested in this subclade, so otherwise, uh, skip over. A lot to unpack, uh, and I will do a more in-depth uh, video uh, on this with uh, some other studies and things uh, at one point, but I just want to get the uh, the basic foundations laid here. So usually I use multiple sources. Uh, for this, I'm basically just using um, Macchiano of Wikipedia, and I've summarized his uh, very uh, uh, comprehensive uh, notes uh, on the subject. There doesn't seem to be that much easily findable, but I will look uh, into some studies. So, um, yeah, here you've got a map of the incidence of J2B, uh, and so you can see uh, where it's prominent. It's prominent in the Western Balkans, where one branch uh, is is almost exclusively found uh, in, in that region and, and further east, and then the other branch is present uh, throughout Europe in small quantities, as you can see, throughout the, most of continental Europe. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's more prominent than the Eastern Mediterranean uh, area. And this lineage is actually uh, quite recent uh, in Europe. And you'll see, I'll go into the branches now and how they split off. I had made a map, uh, which I still have. It's in uh, very foundational stages. But because uh, there's quite a lot to unpack, the branches kind of have similar migration routes. Uh, and there are a few questions uh, about the migration route as well. Um, although I'll give you uh, Makiyama's theories, uh, we don't exactly have all of the data because it's quite a small uh, subclade in terms of historical samples. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to show you a uh, map of mine. I'll show you this map and I'll show the the, uh, the origins. Okay, so let's look at the origins quickly, then I'll go into the subclades. So, uh, these are maps I've shown previously. So, obviously, uh, IJ forms there, probably in, in eastern Anatolia. Then uh, J forms as the eastern branch, I, I forms as the, the basal I clade that comes over into Europe, into the Balkans there. But here we're concerned with uh, J2. So uh, J2 forms probably there in the Levant. Um, could be, you'll, you'll see quite a lot uh, with the, the clades, all of the different clades of this are theorized to have formed in the Caucasus or Western Iran. So yeah, J2 as well could have formed uh, in the Caucasus or Western Iran. Uh, J2A is obviously the other major clade, uh, and that will go into another point here. You can see the migration route of uh, J2. Both clades, uh, J2A and J2B, take similar migration routes. So both, both head east into India, uh, and both head... Uh, west. This one also is found uh, in uh, various peoples of the Volga Urals, so it also goes north there for, uh, beyond the Caucasus, which is uh, an argument for the theory that it originated there, which we'll get to. The first, the first subclade uh, we've got is uh, an east, uh, a largely eastern Mediterranean clade and a Balkan clade, and it's got downstream subclades. Uh, one of which is almost exclusively found in the Balkans. The earliest signs of this type are in the Near East. So it's Canaanite uh, burial from late Bronze Age uh, Lebanon and early Bronze Age Jordan. So yeah, they're either side of either side of Israel in the early and late Bronze Ages. Uh, despite this. Uh, the theory that Makiyama gives is that it originated in the South Caucasus or in Iran, so in the Western Iran, presumably, uh, and then spread to the Levant. But as I say, the earliest samples we have are both there either side of uh, Israel, just north and just east of uh, Israel. So, yeah, I, I mean, it, it seems like it's quite likely it originated in the Near East. So. But yeah, uh, so that it's, it's most common in the Western Balkans. And the Western Balkan branch uh, is called, this is, this is J2B1, the Western Balkan branch is called Y22069, uh, and it's distinct from uh, the rest of the, the Eastern Mediterranean and Caucasian branch, and formed uh, 6,000 years ago, uh, it looks like, but it seems to have become prominent about 900 years ago. So uh, there was likely a very successful number of uh, members of this lineage uh, within the 
last thousand years that uh, is responsible for much of its prominence in the Western Balkans. So that's very interesting. And there are quite a few things like this with, with the other clades as well, as you'll see now. So now we move on to J2B2. J2B2 seems to have formed about 14,000 years ago. Uh, and again, Makiyama presumes that it uh, originated there in the Zagros or in the Caucasus. So again, in, in Iran or in the Caucasus, Western Iran or the Caucasus. And the reason he thinks that they originated in these areas is because, as I said, peoples of the Volga Ural carry it. So the Modvins, the Chuvash, and the Tatars all carry it. Uh, and obviously they have, um, you know, they've lived in the north much longer. They have little to do with the, uh, the Levant. But as you'll see, uh, it's theorized that uh, the lineage penetrated into the Pontic Caspian steppe, which was obviously the area where the earliest Indo-European, the earliest Aryan cultures uh, spread out from. So that may be responsible for much of its dispersal, and these people uh, also passed through the area. So that may be where they picked it up. <coughs> So, uh, almost all J2B is at the L283 branch, and that's only 6,000 years old. So this, unlike a lot, uh, some other subclades, uh, the, the major subclades of this uh, lineage are uh, very young. Uh, and so 99% uh, of those belong to a further uh, downstream subclade, which is uh, Z. 628, also called uh, Z597. And this only formed 4,500 years ago. So this is already uh, this is already late Bronze Age. By this point, uh, most of the movements uh, which formed uh, modern populations had al already taken place. Uh, so this spread out uh, from a region of Europe, probably from uh, the Eastern Med or the Balkans, which is where it and the other branches are more prominent, uh, in very, relatively speaking, in terms of population genetics, very recent history, uh, you know, the late Bronze Age. So, uh, but you'll, we'll come to that in a sec, the explanation, possible explanations uh, about who it came with. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's found as far afield as India, as well as in Armenia and the Levant. So this, this branch, uh, is largely found in Europe, but it's found across all of these places. The oldest sample is Late Bronze Age Croatia. So this is the L283 branch. He goes on to say that J2B uh, is not found in Bronze Age Europe, has not yet been found in Bronze Age Europe, even though that's his theory of how it came. But again, this is Late Bronze Age Europe, our first find of the type. And I presume what he means is that it's not the basal clade. So the L283 branch was found in the Late Bronze Age here in, in Croatia. So this may be the founder, and uh, certainly connected, seems to be connected to the founder of all of the, uh, the Europeans who carry the lineage. So that's very interesting. And he, what's also very interesting is that he seems to have come directly from uh, the Indo-European homeland there on the steppe or what's often presumed to be their homeland. I think the original homeland was uh, a little further east, but uh, for our purposes, we'll call it the Indo-European homeland. So uh, he, he's th he seems to have come directly from there because more than half of his uh, autosomes are directly from that area. So he's 30% or more um, step. So that's, that's the the elements that the, the Aryans, the Indo-Europeans carried, and the uh, he's also uh, got a high uh, amount of Eastern hunter-gatherer lineage, uh, which were the people who were present there before the Indo-European invasions. They were the people uh, who were picked up alongside them. So uh, more than half of his heritage uh, is from the steppe, so he, he's a recent arrival. Uh, and so you'll see Makiyamo's uh, theory on the back of that, as well as the uh, the patterns. Uh, so he, so yes, he suggests that uh, it arrived on the Pontic Caspian Steppe, as I mentioned earlier, in the the Neolithic or the Chalcolithic. So it'd be late late Neolithic, um, late Stone Age or Chalcolithic. So the the Copper Age, which was the sort of transitional period between the Stone Age and the Bronze Age, in in areas where there was such a transition. Uh, and so then it was absor absorbed there by the, the early uh, Aryans, by the early Europeans, before it was dispersed 
through their invasions in the Bronze Age, uh, because obviously they invaded all the way from from Europe to India, and and as I as I said, that European to Indian dispersal suggests it. It's in favour of the theory, but the fact the absence of the lineage, the two things: this absence of the lineage in Northern Europe, and also the fact that it's not found until the late Bronze Age, that suggests against it because it means it wasn't carried by the earlier Bronze Age uh, invaders of Europe, because by this point um, in time. Uh, unless there are earlier samples still to be found, by this point in time, uh, most of Europe was already uh, invaded and all of Europe already had drift from the Indo-Europeans. Uh, again, as I've mentioned, it's never been found in Bronze Age European samples, but he's mentioned a late Bronze Age, so it must be the basal clade he's talking about. And so he goes on to say, because it's present uh, in high quantities in Greece, but it's not present in uh, Crete, and it wasn't present among them in earlier times. He says it's, it doesn't seem to be associated with Neolithic Greeks or Minoans, and it likely arrived uh, in the area later. So he posits that the Illyrians and the Mycenaeans, uh, the particular uh, cultural and genetic group of the Greeks, the Mycenaeans there, uh, and possibly also ancestral Albanians uh, were originally uh, the carriers, and they brought it uh, to the region after they were pushed out of the steppe in the late Bronze Age by the ascendants of the, Sh the Shrubna culture. So that's a very interesting theory, and again, uh, when I do more videos on this, hopefully I can find some studies uh, which relate, and then yeah, I can, I can uh, comment further one way or the other. So that was J2B2. Uh, L283, and we've got one, one further clade to talk about, uh, which is J2B2Z2432, uh, and this is the, the West Asian uh, Neolithics who expanded into South Asia. So these, this is uh, J2B2 in India, uh, the clade split 10,000 years ago. And it likely signals uh, descent from the tribe of Neolithic Iranians who migrated east uh, to India. Uh, but it is quite possible that uh, some branches migrated in more recent times.